Wow. Welcome to On the Road with Noble Outfitters. Today, we're in Oklahoma City at the historic stockyards. We're gonna visit a saddle shop that has over a hundred year history of making saddles and repairing saddles and also has created a unbelievable, beautiful atmosphere here in Oklahoma City. We're gonna visit with Joe Weems in just a minute and she's gonna show us around this beautiful store. Stick around, stay tuned, this is gonna be fun. In the mid-1800s, America was pushing west and expanding at a rate unknown to any previous civilization. Americans pursued their dreams and unlimited opportunity, but they needed food, equipment, seeds, and tack to press on beyond the established cities and towns already settled. Out of this demand, a new retailer was born, the General Store, who handled everything a westward family would need to survive. Today, these retailers provide rural Americans the same materials, service, and expertise that made them invaluable over 150 years ago. Join Noble Outfitters as we rediscover the retailing backbone of America. Hear their story in their own words, how they've not only survived, but actually thrived in the modern world. Come along as we go On the Road with Noble Outfitters. Welcome back to On the Road with Noble Outfitters. I have the extreme pleasure this morning of sitting here with the owner of National Saddlery, Joe Weens. Joe, I have had a blast being here and I've only been here for a few minutes. You've got all kinds of fun stuff for us to see today. And uh, I'd like for you to tell the folks out there a little bit about the history of this beautiful store and this area, the stockyards, and, and how you got involved with this. I thought that was one of the most impressive stories of something I've, I've, I've ever heard of how a person got involved in a business. Well, thank you. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here It's today. our pleasure. We are thrilled to have you here and host you for this, this wonderful day. Um, this is National Salary. National Salary started in 1926, and it's uh, the product of a family dispute. The Janu family had a saddle shop on the west side of Stockyards, and when the father passed, the two brothers, as sometimes happens in families, couldn't get along, so they parted ways. And Earl Janu moved into the building um, that we're presently in, the original National Salary Building, and um, began a work and saddle shop. Well, I was a customer of the store. My husband and I had engaged John Rule, who was the former owner of the store, to build us shaps and shanks and saddles. We have three or four National Salary saddles that we um, purchased uh, from him. As a customer. As a customer. And I was in the store one day just having a belt punched or getting some work done, and um, he asked me to take a look at a, at a document. And so I started reading this document, and it was a contract to sell his building. And so I just stopped cold in my tracks and kind of had a chill come up my spine. I said, John, what, what are you doing? And he said, well, I, I'm going to sell the building. And I said, but what about the store? And he said, well, it's, I'm just, it's going to be done. I'm going to turn my attention to art. Uh, John's a real artist. And I, I, my first thing was, but John, what are you going to do with a sign? Because <laughs> we have a real historic neon sign out front of our building. And he said, I don't know. I guess we'll take it down and put it in a junk Oh, room. my gosh. I said, John, you can't do that. National Salary has been in business since 1926. You're watching a piece of history just dissolve. Precisely. <laughs> I said, we can't let that happen. And he said, well, what can we do? So one thing led to another. And we were so pleased within a week to, to own the business. And John and Donna Kay stayed on with us and, and worked here in the saddle shop and were an important part of our transition into moving into this bigger, beautiful space. That's great. So you transitioned from the old store and took on this beautiful space here. Yes, sir. And kept the old store, though. And we're going to get over there in a little bit to see what you've done over there because that is, uh, that, that's, I think I might like that even more than the saddles because I'm not really a cowboy. Uh, you know, I have a hat on, but you know what they say in Texas, all hat, no cattle, you know, that's me. But anyway, I love your store because I'm a candy fanatic and it's a candy store, a soda store, uh, and it's just a, a beautiful uh, antique looking uh, store over there. Well, thank you. We, um, uh, for years, we kind of struggled with its identity um, since we wanted to stay true to the historic nature of the building. And this is a, we have a welcome visitors from all over the world here in Stockyard City because of its um, 
historic aspect and interest. So we have visitors that come through and ask for certain things and really the, the, the original location which we now call Stockyard Sarsaparilla is um, is a response to what our visitors here in Stockyards asked for. They wanted a fun place where they could buy made in Oklahoma product and you know experience that western feel. So right. it's, a, it's a special place. Can you get a sarsaparilla over there? You can get one of many different varieties of sarsaparilla. Well I'm gonna go over there later on today and we're gonna have a sarsaparilla <laughs> at the bar. Very good, very good. I understand there's a bar in there that's also ancient. There. It's like over a hundred years old. Yes sir. The bar itself. It's a what, 1895 Brunswick bar that we searched the country over for and found and it, it has a story of its own as well and it certainly has brought new life into an already interesting historic building. And that's an interesting old name, Brunswick. You know, Brunswick makes the bowling products, right? And the bowling pins used to be wood. And what's interesting is, is that Brunswick, the old Brunswick company, was a woodworking uh, facility. And so they made bars out of wood. They made the bowling pins, the bowling lanes, and it was a woodworking company. They used to make all the bars, all the old western bars. They did indeed, and they would build them, and many of them are very large. The the uh, sarsaparilla bar, as we call it now, is 22 feet long. And so those bars, think of that 100 years ago, there weren't big truck lines. So those bars were freighted in on horse-drawn wagons in pieces and delivered. And in fact, it was almost like that when we got the bar into our store. It was quite an interesting feat to get that in that, that store. But uh, a great American company and really just a, a wonderful contribution to um, the Western way of life. Well, last night when we came into town, you took us to a wonderful steakhouse, Cattleman's, great name, and uh, it's over 100 years old, the restaurant itself, and, uh, and just had a beautiful steak dinner, and yeah. we appreciate that. In our segment this week, we have some wonderful things to share. Uh, we usually have a recipe of the week, and, and I understand we don't just have a recipe, uh, we have a whole lunch prepared in old chuck wagon style. Tell us a little bit about what we're going to see. Well, we have a real treat on store for you today. Um, uh, the, we have a Dutch oven um, father and son team that have come in early this morning and set up a campsite and they are cooking casseroles and breads and cobblers of every flavor you can think of. And so this would be as if they were out there yeah. on, on the road with the wagons and they cook like they cooked out there with no gas, no stoves. They cook in Dutch ovens on fire and they're preparing this meal for us. Exactly. Oh, that's going to be a treat. That's going to be a treat. And then also on our Noble Child of the Week, um, we're going to have a young man that I understand is a rodeo clown. <laughs> That's exactly right. Um, Jackson Frank is going to be here for our uh, segment and he's, we've been sponsoring him since he was about yay high when he decided he wanted to be a, a rodeo clown. And uh, he's, he's a hoot and just a, a tremendous young man, comes from a great <laughs> hardworking family. Well thank you Joe for your hospitality here today and uh, we're going to take a nice tour around the store and we'll look forward to our lunch and we'll look forward to meeting Jackson and and we're going to have some fun today. Thank you very much. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Stay tuned with On the Road with Noble Outfitters. We've got lots more from Oklahoma City. You're watching On the Road with Noble Outfitters. Welcome back to On the Road with Noble Outfitters. We're going to get a tour of this beautiful store right now by Lacey Dalton who's going to show us around and tell us all the beautiful things and artifacts that are in this wonderful store. Good morning, Dan. Good to see you, Lacey. You too. Thank you for coming. My pleasure. How long have you worked here? I worked here for 10 years. Oh my goodness. Well, you <laughs> know every nook and cranny of this store then. Pretty much, yes. All right. Well, correct. let's get into it. Show us around. Okay. So what we try to accomplish here is giving people a sense of home, comfort. We want you to come in thinking that this could be your living room, this could be your home. It's a sense of customer service. That's, That's really wonderful. That's is. a wonderful feeling of customer service. I feel very much at home here because you got our shirts and, and Noble stuff all yes, over the store. Yes, so we appreciate correct. that. We, we thoroughly enjoy the Noble Outfitters as it comes in and stuff like that. This is our new line. You've also got artwork. Yes, yes. All of our um, items are signed and numbered, limited editions, or they're originals. A so lot of our, some of these are original correct. paintings. Yes, sir. Are they done by local artists sometimes? Sometimes, yes. Um, this one is art by Carol. And then we've also got a lady named Kathy Leitner. She's out of Kingfisher, Oklahoma. 
and we do have several of her pieces in the store. Beautiful artwork. Thank you. One more thing that I would actually like to talk to you about is this saddle over here that's in this case. It was actually done by John Rule. That's all hand tooled. Um, the seat is uh, ostrich, and then the, the cannel is actually done in kangaroo stitching. Wow. So that's all um, silver, sterling silver, not plated. Um, and then So is that saddle for sale? Correct, yes. And uh, may I ask how much that saddle is? If you would like to purchase that today, it could be $30,000. $30,000 saddle. Yes. Ostrich seat, mm -hmm. solid silver. And then it has a longhorn on the back. And a longhorn on the back. Yes. So Lacey, thanks for the tour of the front part of the store. I understand we're going to get Jessica to show us around the back half. That is correct. This is Miss Jessica Reed, and she is, in fact, our store manager. How are you doing, Jessica? Good. How are you? Thank you. And you enjoy managing this beautiful store? Yes, sir. How long have you been here? About four or five years. That's wonderful. Our store is kind of laid out in you know, several different parts, as you saw on the front. And now we're over here. Um, we just try to set it up to meet all the needs of our customers. And over here, we've got, you know, starts with our grooming, and we go to all your horse health products you need and your stall wash. I, hey, you're selling some good wound care here. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> we you know. sell that, and we sell a lot of the bigger spray bottles, kind of at shows. You know, a lot of people will spray their stalls down before they bed their horses down. You know what's crazy is, is again, you know, we're making everything from, you know, beautiful clothing yes, sir. to wound care. But when we had some focus groups, some of the folks are saying, you know, hey, we need to come out with a wound care that when it freezes, it doesn't go, it doesn't go bad. Yes. This won't freeze. Uh, so, you know, you have it out in the barn and like out there this morning, it was at like 32 degrees. Yes, so there sir. goes your wound care. It's not working anymore. And also, it, it some of the wound care expires. Mm -hmm. So it'll get it'll get too old and then it, you can't use it anymore. It actually has a shelf date. Mm -hmm. Ours doesn't expire. And uh, and one of the fun things too for us is I think uh, this foaming, mm -hmm. you know, this it foams and, and that's kind of a cool, you know, feature that it will stay right on the wound and people like that, they can just rub it in. How's, how have people enjoyed this? Really good. Um, you know, one of the other things we've kind of got some good feedback on is a lot of your other wound care, it'll kind of settle at the bottom. You have to shake it before you use it. Obviously nothing in that settles to the bottom, so you really don't have to shake it before you use it. Yeah, we're having fun with the wound care and stall wash. It's, it's doing great and our customers enjoy it. Well, we appreciate you selling it for us. Oh, absolutely. So let's walk through the rest of the back of the store. So I see this is the this, this is, is of, saddle area. Yes, sir. This is going to be more of like your trail saddles, kind of just comfort, pleasure riding. Um, and right behind that, your bits. Up top, you have your blankets. Here, you have just your reins. And then we got some head stalls and breast collars and stirrups and chinks for your kind of, you know, your ranchers, your working cowboys that are going to wear your shafts and chinks. So it's amazing to me you have just everything for the for the consumer because when they came into town, you know, on the buckboard, they'd be picking up all kinds of different supplies and things, and the kids would be with them. And and you even have, you know, toys for the kids, and you always have to you always have to have something for them to to take with them. And this is about the cutest thing I've ever seen. I could even ride this horse. I might have to buy one of these and take it home for my, for my granddaughter. This is great. I love it. Fall off. This be hard. I bet I could fall off of this one. <laughs> And then we go to the socks and the gloves. Socks are an interesting product because uh, we make a, a boot sock, right? Yes, the, sir. the best dang boot sock. But we made the boot sock to go up over the calf. Of course, it protects your calf up there. But that's not just the only purpose of that sock. I mean, there's I, I could go on about the socks for an hour, you know, about all the different developments in the sock. But even if you're not wearing boots, you want to wear that sock up over your calf because it's therapeutic. But the most important thing is that our socks go up over the calf. They keep your calf intact and they give you more energy at the end of the day, but they don't create a tourniquet up there. They're perfectly fit to where they just stay up there. They don't fall down and they give you that therapeutic energy at the end of the day. So I recommend no matter what you're wearing, you always wear a sock over the calf. Very fun. Well, this is a beautiful store and I've really appreciated meeting you yes, and spending some time here. Thanks for showing me yes, around. Sir. Thank you. We are gonna meet with a young man named Jackson here just in a few minutes, who is a mutton busting expert and also a clown. Stay tuned for On the Road with Noble Outfitters. Welcome back to On the Road with Noble Outfitters. Today, on our Noble Child of the Week, we have some fun for you. I have a young man here 
called Jackson Frank. Is it Jackson Frank or Jackson Frankfurter? Jackson Frank. Jackson Frank, okay. Well, Jackson Frank is quite a character and we're gonna have a nice chat with him about all the different things that he does. And uh, obviously, this is not your normal look today, so you're dressed up as a rodeo clown. Are you a rodeo clown? Yes, I am. And tell me about that. Where do you rodeo clown? I fight Kev Steers, 600 pound bulls. 600 pound bulls? Well, you probably weigh about 30 pounds yourself, so you gotta make sure you get out of the way of those bulls, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, you better, absolutely. How old are you? Eight. And uh, I understand you have a nickname. What's your nickname? Snack Pack. Snack Pack. Do you think you're gonna be a bull rider one of these days? Yes, I am. Yes, you. there's no question about it, huh? You're gonna be. Okay, I like that. I like that determination, I'll tell you that much. Well, tell me about your chores. Do you have to do anything when you get up in the morning and work around the, work around the house? Yes, I do. And tell me a little bit about your house. Do you have a, you have a farm, you have animals? I have a farm and animals. And how many animals you got? Mm, 50 head of heifers. Yeah. And 20 horses. 50 head of heifers, 20 horses. So do you have to help out and keep yes, things clean and muck the stalls? And do you do that every morning? I don't work the stalls every morning. Okay, tell me what you do. Every morning I actually feed my dog, feed cows, my horse. And how do you earn money? I mean, because you actually earn some money to, to pay for your fees and stuff. So tell me about that. Well, I go, well, my grandpa pays for one of my rodeos. And then I rodeo and work that money back and pay for my next rodeo. I like it. And work that money back. So you're, you're kind of like a businessman already eight years old. You know, if I told you that the average age of a youngster in the United States going to work today was 18 years old, would you believe me? I mean, that's kind of crazy, isn't it? And you're working already and you're eight years old. So, you know, I always tell kids and I try to explain to them that you, you learn three ways. You learn at home, from your mom and daddy telling you things to do at home and doing the right things. You learn at school and how to do math and, and different things in school, but you also learn working. You learn responsibility from working. And without that third leg of the stool, getting out and working, you're just not learning everything you need to learn. So I just appreciate that you're out there working and learning as a young person. It's a wonderful occasion to be here with you and just learn more about you and see what you've been doing. I really appreciate that you're eight years old and doing things like an adult, um, learning responsibility and being a great person. So I have a gift for you and I want you to put this in the bank. Do you have a bank account? No, but my dad's getting me one. Well, I've got a crisp $100 bill here that I would like you to keep and I want you to start that with your bank account and I want you to start your bank account and I want you to grow it up big and keep saving and keep being a wonderful young man and keep in touch with me because I'd like to know you for a long time. Thank you, Jackson. We'll be right back with On the Road with Noble Outfitters. Stay tuned and you're gonna see the recipe of the week like you've never seen before. About 30 different entrees cooked by a chuck wagon in Dutch ovens just like they did when they crossed the plains. Stay tuned. You're watching On the Road with Noble Outfitters. We are on the road with Noble Outfitters. This time, literally on the road. We are going to have a chuck wagon lunch just like the old timers used to do, coming across the plains in their chuck wagons, cooking lunch and dinner out on the prairie. Today with me, I've got Damon and Buddy Winborn, and these guys are experts at the chuck wagon lunch. And they're gonna tell us about all the different entrees they prepared right here over wood in cast iron ovens. So Buddy, I understand you've been doing this for quite a few years. About 30 years now I've been cooking in a Dutch oven. About 30 years. Uh, so how many entrees are we gonna try today? Today we've got a hash brown casserole, uh, we've got some uh, homemade yeast bread on a recipe that I use, and we also have some uh, cobblers, two different kinds of cobbler. Damon is my cobbler expert, 
And so he's prepared two different cobblers for you. Damon might be your cobbler making expert. I'm gonna be your cobbler eating expert. All okay? right, well, I, we'll, we we'll go that. with that. We you, bet. Yeah. you know, I have to tell you something. I'm a chef, I've been a chef all my life. Started when I was 15 years old in a restaurant cooking and uh, after 25 years worked as a chef. So this is gonna be a tremendous treat for me to see how you've prepared these wonderful entrees out here with just wood and charcoal right out here outside. So I'm ready to take a look at some of these items. Maybe you can describe them to us. You bet. Let's take a look. Dad's gonna pop the lid on a few of them here right quick. Uh, first thing he's gonna pop the lid on is our hash brown casserole. Uh, we've taken the casserole recipe, we've changed it up a little bit. We've added bacon, sausage, we've added salsa, we've added some peppers, some onions, <laughs> and we've, we've kind of styled it up a little bit, put a little, little bit of spice to it, not a whole lot, little green chilies. Okay. Uh, spiced it up a little bit. All right. Can't so wait to try that one. We're going to hook that up here in just a little bit. Uh, it's great. It's nice for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, either one. That's what we liked about it. We're gonna open a cobbler here, or that's gonna be the other hash brown casserole that we've got. Okay. Um, this one is gonna be our cherry cobbler. Cherry cobbler. The cherry cobbler. Uh, okay, so absolutely. Okay, you're talking about a cast iron Yes, sir. bowl. This cast basically. iron pot, this, this Dutch oven is what they're called. Okay. Uh, we took the Dutch oven, we use a lot of charcoal. We put uh, anywhere from 10 to 15 on top. 10 or 12 underneath. Okay, on top of the lid. On top so of you're this going lid. on top of the lid yes, and underneath. <laughs> And yes, you're sir. putting it around the fire. And the crust, though, I noticed the crust on the cobbler is brown. It's like it's browned up, just like it was in an oven. What, what's the nice thing about this is you're able to actually use it just like an oven. No matter what, whatever you can cook in your restaurant, we can cook right here on the open, on the, That's in a cobbler. I mean, because it's basically an oven. You've got heat on top, heat on bottom. And so your crust is the same on both The only sides. thing at the restaurant is I don't get the smoke in my eyes. <laughs> smoke or the wind. <laughs> you don't get this ambiance either. Yeah. Exactly. Now, the thing about the oven is, uh, for people that's watching that don't know anything about them, a Dutch oven requires a lip so it holds the coals. So hold the coals in. As well as the legs. Right. A lot of people, keep it has, off, keep it a lot off the people coals. has a pot that is cast iron. But it doesn't, it's like this pot over here with no legs and no lid on it. Okay. And you can't do it what we do with it. So with that one, you're going to suspend over the coals and use it more like something you're boiling. Yeah, yes. our ranch beans and, and our stews and stuff like that. Okay. We're Amazing. Gonna... So what else we got here? And then our last one is our apple cobbler. Oh my goodness. This is an apple cobbler that, again, <laughs> I, 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 I make up my own recipes on them. And so basically when I get my fillings, I, I add this, I add that, I kind of add it to taste. I may add brown sugar, I may add sugar, I may add cinnamon, you know, and so I change it up a little bit. Each time, it, it's always just a little bit different. Now every week on the show, what we like to do is give people a recipe okay. for what it is we're doing. Yes. So I'd like to get some of your recipes. Okay. I'm also going to get the name of the pots so that people can try this at home when they're yes. out fishing or camping and try to make one of your cobblers yes, out there. Okay. okay, we'll and do that. What's nice is we actually put on schools. We actually have people that'll come in and we actually teach people how to do this. You know, uh, people that are in their RVs or people that are just going around, we actually do a class and we teach people how to do this right here with a simple pot. So if they lose electricity, like we have around here for the last month, yes, everybody can still cook a meal and still have dinner. Absolutely. This is an art. It is an art. It, it takes, you got to learn your steel. You got to know each one of these pots has a personality just like a person and you learn that and they all cook different and they all in it weather you got it not only is it just the pots but it's the weather i mean this we're misty we're kind of nasty today we're cold you know you get a day so that's going to affect the heat on the pot you yes i get a day where it's 80 degrees absolutely no wind you're losing four or five cold i can't tell you how much we appreciate you folks being out here since three o'clock this morning cooking up this wonderful food and we're going to get everybody out here and have a big chuck wagon lunch and uh, tell them a little bit more about these wonderful entrees you, you cooked okay. up. Most definitely. Thank you very much for coming it out. It's been doing our this pleasure, sir. It's my pleasure. Yes, sir. Thank you for having us. Yes, sir. We're on the road with Noble Outfitters. Stay tuned and we're all going to have lunch. We'll be right back. I'd like to say a very special thank you to everyone here at National Saddlery in Oklahoma City at the old stockyards. This has been an absolute pleasure. And this lunch, incredible. Thank you all, and we'll see you next week on On the Road with Noble Outfitters. Take care now. Next week on On the Road with Noble Outfitters, we're gonna be in Decatur, Texas, showing everybody why they say it's bigger in Texas. NRS, 
100,000 square feet farm and feed store. Don't miss it. See you on Wednesday night. Mmm, Jackson, that's good. What do you think? Mmm, that's not bad. These guys could cook for me anytime. There you go. Here I am, coming into Oklahoma City, coming down the stockyards, getting ready to visit National Salary. Oh, baby. Whoa, Nelly. Whoa. All right, so speaking of muffin. <laughs> muffin? Not muffin. Mutton busting. So speaking of muffin busting, we are going <laughs> to... Give me a muffin, will you?